Hey teammates, what is going on? It's Paintball Duke 22 here. This is Questing in Minecraft episode 48. This is going to be our logic gate tutorial. And I'm going to probably release this in three parts. So, this is going to be part one. This is going to be beginners, logic gates, things that you should get to know before we get into some of the more intricate designs of the logic gates. In this tutorial, I'm going to be pointing out why exactly these things work, the steps that they take to make the results what we see. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I have two strings of redstone attached to switches and pistons at the end of it. Now when we flick both the switches we see that the piston on the right does not go up. Piston on the left does. And this is like we talked about before. This one block can make an entire difference in your redstone builds. This one block made it so this piston didn't get powered, which that this piston could be anything uh, from a track changer to a even just a repeater for something else to get a signal. And so spacing is going to be really, really, really important. So let's go ahead and get into the basic logic gates. So the first gate we have is called a NOT gate, and I don't know why that's not capitalized. It's supposed to be N, capital N, capital O, capital T. And basically, this is an inverter. Uh, you hear people talking about inverting the signal, so let's go ahead and talk about what that means. So right now you see our input, which is this switch, is off, because this redstone is turned off. Now, the inverter is right here. What it is, is it takes the signal from the input and makes it the opposite of whatever it is and then continues the signal. So this torch on this block represents an inverter, a NOT gate. So the redstone going into the block is non-powered which means the block is itself is non-powered. The torch is able to stay in its default state which is on and power this redstone which makes the piston extended. And that kind of works the opposite way as the regular way. When you flick the switch, the piston goes up. In this instance, when you flick the switch, the piston is going to go down because the power goes into the block, which changes the state of the torch, which makes the piston go into its off state. So that's a NOT gate. That is how an inverter works. Now let's go into a NOT NOT gate. Now, um, I've built a compressed version of this really quick, or here right now. So let me go ahead and show you basically what a NOT NOT gate is. It's two NOT gates which is this, some redstone, and this. This is a NOT gate. So you have your input which is off and your output which is off. A NOT NOT gate is also referred to as a repeater. Um, I've just made a little compressed version and then I'll go ahead and show you guys the actual a uh, repeater block in Minecraft as well, which I've already shown you a little bit. But, okay, so you here you have the input which is off, goes into this block which is off. This torch is powering this redstone because it's adjacent to it, which is powering this block which makes this torch go into its off state. And so the result for the output is that it is off. So when we flick the switch, this block is going to get power, which will turn this torch off because that's the state will change, which means this redstone will go out, turning this block off, which will turn this into its on state and hopefully allow our piston to extend. So we flick the switch and we see that is indeed what happens. This torch goes out, this torch comes on, and the piston extends. Now, in Minecraft, they have the repeater block, which does essentially this exact same thing, in, except instead of taking up three blocks space, it only takes up one block space. Now, the bad thing about the these kind of repeaters is they are directional, but when you take into consideration that they're so much smaller, they're still the best choice in any repeater need. So let's move on to the next gate, which is an OR gate. 
And you see in parentheses here on this sign it says non-isolated inputs. So let's talk about isolated inputs for a minute. Um, this one has non-isolated inputs. So the redstone, these three are all hooked up to the same circuit, these three inputs. And an OR gate means if any of these inputs is pressed, the result will be that the piston or whatever your output is will change its state. So if you flicked the first input, the output would change its state. Now, not to confuse you by overwhelming you, but isolated inputs, you notice over here on this one side for the third input, I have another string going to another piston. Now with non-isolated inputs, you notice when you flick this first switch, the redstone current travels all the way into these other inputs and up to the output, but also up into here. Now that might be beneficial for what you're looking for. If you want to be able to flick any of these three inputs and have all the pistons go up. Um, but let's go ahead and get into an OR gate that has isolated inputs and that looks like this. You have your inputs going into a block with a redstone torch on it and then you, this should look familiar to you. It's a not not gate which basically is a repeater but this kind of not uh, this kind makes the inputs isolated. When I flick this switch right here, the first input, the piston will go out, or the piston will go up because the torch goes out. I've already explained how exactly this works. So I'm not going to again just because that would add a lot of time onto the video. So the second one, you flick it and it goes up, but you notice this piston over here is not. Now it's essentially the same wiring except the third input, since it is isolated away from the other inputs, the redstone doesn't travel through this block and go to the other uh, redstone circuits around it. It just it makes it so that this piston is only going to go up, or this output, whatever, is only going to go up when the third input is pressed. Like, if you say this was inside your house and this was outside of your house, when you wanted when you were coming in from the outside of your house you wanted to open the door so you would click and it would open the door let's say that was a door let's say it was a button so you it would open the door you could go in and it would stop itself now let's say this one was inside your house and when you wanted to leave you would open the door and turn off your lights so if you had lights this would be the lights and that would be the door. So the door would open and the lights would change their state, whatever they were on, off, whatever you wanted. That was uh, just kind of a way for you to relate it to uh, how it would be useful. Okay, let's move on to an AND gate. So with the OR gates, it was one, if one of the inputs was pressed, the outcome would be the output would change its state. Now AND gates are a little bit different. AND gates, they require to have all of the inputs on in order for the output to become on as well. So like for example, if we flick this first input, we notice that this torch goes out but the piston doesn't change its state. Whereas, oh and if we switch over to this one, it has the same effect. But if we turn both of the inputs on at the same time the piston changes its state. Now why is that? Well we have power going into these two blocks that have redstone torches on them and we know that when pa when a block gets powered the redstone torch changes its state. Well here we have a little bit of redstone on top of this block that's adjacent to these torches. So like if I were to flick this switch really quick you see that this torch powers the redstone and vice versa on the other side. So when this is powered so when these inputs, when both of the inputs are off or only one of them is off this has power from one of these redstone torches which means that it transmutes, it transfers its power to this block 
which makes the torch go out so the piston doesn't retract. But, at, but when we flick both of the inputs, the torches are out, which makes this redstone turn off so the block doesn't get any power from it, which allows this redstone torch to go to its default state and extend the piston. So that is how an AND gate works. They both have to. So think of it like the inputs, this input and this input have to be pressed. So with this one, you thought this input or this input or this input, whereas with this one, it has to be both, this one and this one, to get the desired effect. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of a NOR gate. Now you say that, oh, that sounds really similar to an OR gate. Well, it is. Basically, a NOR gate is an inverse of an OR gate. And by inverse, I mean with an OR gate, the output was in its default off state. Whereas with this, we notice the same setup. It's an OR gate that goes into a NOT gate, which inverts the signal and makes it positive. So that's, so that's where you get the NOR from. So, it basically works the exact same way. This one, you notice, is non-isolated, which means when we flick this switch, all of this redstone is going to be powered. But you notice when we flick the switch, the piston changes its state because the powered block, the block gets powered from the input and inverts the torch. And that works with any of these. And we notice with non-isolated inputs, if we had something coming off this branch that we only wanted when this, when we flicked this input, it wouldn't work unless we found a way to isolate the inputs. Well, the good news is there is an easy way to isolate the inputs on a NOT gate. Basically, you take this, uh, sorry, NOT gate, huh. This is a NOR gate, not a NOT gate. <laughs> Anyway, you take this, uh, you take the NOT gate and move it back from here, back to isolate the inputs. So all the inputs feed, <coughs> excuse me, still getting over that sinus infection. All the NOT gates, or all the inputs feed into this block, into the NOT gate, and the result is a positive or, uh, on state out, uh, output. So if we were to flick any of these switches, any of these inputs, the output would turn off. And that is how a NOT gate works. So now we're getting to a NAND gate. So we see a NAND gate is the inverse of an AND gate. So we can kind of guess what happens. So with AND, they both have to be on for the output to change its state. Now we see the N in front of it, which kind of means the inverse. So we know that we're going to have to, so we know by default the output is going to be on, and we're going to have to turn on both of the inputs for the output to go off. So if we flick both of these, we notice that the output goes off. And this is because the redstone goes into the blocks. Now you notice on the on the regular AND gate, we had a torch on this side of the on this side of this block. But it, as for the uh, NAND gate, we don't have that, and that's because we want the signal from these torches to continue onto the output. So if they're both off, then the output will be off. So I hope you learned something from this Minecraft basics in Redstone logic gates. And thanks for watching. This is Paintball Duke 22.